flavor. Well, take out the prize stick or some critter will get a free meal off our bait. You ain't putting no bait in it. Just tend to your prize stick. You know what I think sometimes, Bing? I sometimes think that the wild beasts of the forest are smarter than us human beings. Yeah, well, you just scared off every beast within two miles if you call that being smart. Something's coming. Hand me my rifle. Mr. Boone. Well, that's Bingham. I doubt very seriously if my hide would have brought very much. You seen Cully and his bunch around? They went their way and I went mine. Now, if you want them, I can trade them out for you. No, I just thought I'd visit with them if they're still trapping in these parts. Say, you might have done better if you'd throw in with them. Well, you went your own way, I see. Well, Mr. Boone's a loner at trapping. Well, good luck with what's left of the season. Bye. Maybe we should have gone partners with Cully and all them. They ever invite us to anything before, even when we had Mama? We don't have no piece of land. So why do you think they wanted us this time? More the merrier? No. Uh -oh. So they could rob us blind and deep. And maybe even lame, that's what. Well, we wouldn't have made them stinking rich. Well, you forgot about her early season cash. Well, you didn't speak of Mr. Boone, of it. A sharp eye and a closed mouth made good business. I read that in my copybook that year I went to the Dane School. We got much of anything in that cash? You'll see when I show you. You mean before we reset the trap? Now nah, I'm up to here with telling you to take out the prize stake for a living. Now pick up them traps and let's go. remember where our trappings is hid. Well, if you're so smart, you tell me, and I'll say if you're right. It's between uh, Stony Bottom Creek and a lightning blasted tree. Or was it the blaze tree? Well, that just shows you how good you are, remember. What you doing, baby? I'm showing you our cash. That's what I'm doing. I can see how stony bottom that creek is. But Bing and I don't see that. Uh huh. Oh, it, was, it was a lightning blasted tree after all. No more, no less. Just like I said. Now open her up. What? Our cash. Open her up. Oh, we sure done a good job of it while we's at it. Bing and you was right, we would have. Would have what? Made Colleen them in Cahooter stinking rich when they robbed us. Huh? I forgot how many of them we trapped for our lectern van. Well, it's a good thing you got me to do the remembering. Now we can buy us enough acres so they got to invite us, but we don't have to go less than it suits us. If you toss out our early season take whilst I think up how to deal with it. Yeah, you figure out how to make them sweat, Bingham. Be sweat and be clabber. <laughs> Daniel Boone was a man, just a big man, with an eye like an eagle. 
eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Gentleman was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old and to the heel of his raw high shoe. The rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man the frontier ever knew. Not even one squirrel skin left in there. It'd be a thin summer ahead if it went for these lynxes and divvy up. There's not enough of that to make it a fat one. I hate to think of. What Miss Gracie gonna say? I'd like to get my hands on them just for about two minutes. Well, their tracks are still fresh. They hadn't taken the creek water when they left. Ah, uh, they came through it and they went through it. They're old hands at this business. Those traps don't have the owner's names on them, do they? Grand. Real professionals. At least they left their traps for us. Yeah, so Rusty and Ill used it wouldn't pay to lug them home. And now they use them. No, they didn't have to. They had ours to work for them. Boy, I dread thinking about going home. <laughs> Yeah. You remember what rub used to taste like when we had some? Uh, I'm feeding you right now. Try not to miss. It ain't loaded. I'm just checking it out. Here, hold it. Hold it. Maybe we're dreaming. Maybe we ain't. Come on. Take this. Free country. That's all I've heard. You don't take no stock in it? Uh, don't give him the satisfaction, S. Yeah, I don't give you the satisfaction. Just leave him the stew in his own juice. The stew. Load me up, Bingham. Red fox. Beaver. It's just plain old winter trappings. We got bail on bail of it. Of um, plain old winter trappings. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Churchill James. I'd, I'd like to apologize for my bad temper. Well, I guess you got the right to. Yes, let me make it up to you. I'd, uh, I'd like you to dine with me. You mean eat? Yes, I wish you would. That's real neighborly. Well, no more than you ought to be. But... So this, um, this saloon keeper is the only fur buyer in your town. And he'll cheat you if he can. Cincinnatus? 
Oh, he keeps a store, too, as well as a tavern, besides being the town's notary and licensor and such. Ah, uh, he's an incahooter just like all the rest of them. Well, I'd, um, I'd take them off your hands myself before I'd let that happen. You a fur buyer? Honi soir qui mal y pense. Oh. Meaning? I am a gentleman. Now, wait here. You know something else? I think he's a fur buyer and ashamed to admit it. Yes. Bluff and heart is the ticket. Inspiring confidence. Yes. I hope he don't diddle us. We know what we want. I'll handle him. Sake. Feast your eyes, gentlemen. What, paper money? Not debased colonial currency worth whatever you can get for it, but fresh new Bank of England five pound notes. Is that what you're figuring on paying us off in? A hundred silver shillings in each and every one. That ain't like a fur buyer. A gentleman. Therefore, an innocent in the marketplace. Now, I depend on you to tell me what they're worth, but I know you well enough to trust you. Now, just say when. How much I'm offering you? They ain't what we got used for. Are. Sure, there's a church over in Winchester got a great big picture window made out of. Oh, that, that, that's glass. These are precious jewels. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds. Say, you got quite a hanker for our furs, ain't you? Well, I don't want to see you cheated by a common saloon keeper. Oh, like I mentioned, Cincinnati keeps a store, too. The fact is, what we got used for is a whole mess of acres. Land. Folks back home look down on us. No. You see, everybody else has got cabins and homesteads, and it makes them high and mighty as so many aldermen. My friends, now I understand. I understand and sympathize. Land you have use for, land you shall have. Yeah, well, if you mean here, it's too far off. They never would even see it. I mean just where you need it. Enough acres so we got to invite them, but they don't have to come lest it suits them. Enough so that if you invite them, they won't dare not to come. <laughs> Mom always said you had more than sawdust for brains banging. Yeah, Mama always knew, S. Mama knew. <laughs> now, last will and testament, please hold them for simple, bill of sale, slow, bill of sale, gentle. Uh, aging's no problem. Yes. 
Christmas in the spring of 1770, after a winter of incredible hardship, Boone came upon a Kentucky river valley, so beautiful and rich that he must have said in his heart, here is a home for my people. This splendid country he described as lying in a land with grass growing knee high in meadows. Stretch as I will, that's the best I can do. Well, we'll have to call on credit to pull through. I do not approve. I'd rather have cash just the same, Mrs. Grace. If you'd only been more provident. But, love, our catch was well hidden. Oh. Well, you don't really think we'd lay ourselves open to fur thieves now if we had a choice, do you? I know what you men are like out there with the animals. I think the punishment was well deserved. Well, you're the expert, Mrs. Grace, but I doubt if the good Lord is going to hire thieves and cutthroats his just will to perform. I would prefer no blasphemy, please. Howdy. Say, Mrs. Grace, you're looking mighty poorly. Now, don't you forget to say your prayers. Oh. <laughs> nah, I'd rather have a nice piece of black broadcloth. Say, how you fix for nice pieces of black broadcloth, Cincinnatus? I am fresh out of stock on credit. Oh, credit. You hinds us have a good season all by your lonesomes. You'd have got stinking rich robbing us. We'd have gone with you. More robberies? Oh, no, ma'am. Bingham protected us. To leave your pelts in the woods? No, we traded off. I heard a story once about a fellow who traded off. Traded a horse for a cow, a cow for a sheep, a sheep for a No, goat. we traded off for land. Hmm. How much did you get? We don't know yet. Well, you do know where your land is, don't you? Well, that's up to you to say. To me? Yeah, we got a deed. Yeah, the man said he could tell from how it was written down just where our acres is. You see that? Now, don't you try and diddle us now. No, sir, don't you dare to try. Well, we'll just take a look in the plat book. See, you know, that's, uh, page four. <coughs> uh, section three and 58 degrees north by 22 degrees east. Oh, no, I must have made some mistake. Well, where is it? Who give you this fool thing? Mr. Mr. James. Mr. James. Cully, come here and take a look at this. Now, he's got about as much right signing his name to a thing like that as Methuselah's tame crow. Look at there, it starts 58 north, 28 east. See there? That's impossible. They're in cahooting again, us. Yeah, you tell us where our acres is right now. Well, according to this deed, you own every inch of Boonesboro. What? Boonesboro? Did you hear that? Why, that would make us their tenants. <laughs> yeah, remember he said when we give the word, they wouldn't dare say no? <laughs> <laughs> What villain would put his name to this? The same villain, Mrs. Grace, who signed his name to yours and mine. Signed Richard A. Henderson, first proprietor of Kentucky. That sure looks like the judge is right. Well, it can't really be, can it? Looks the same to you as it does to me. But Boone knew Henderson. Dan will know if there's any chance of that thing being real. He better know it isn't real. Bingham? Oh, they can in cahoot together until their faces turn blue and purple. We got the papers. <laughs> that paper is signed a year before the deed that Daniel Boone gave us when he induced us to settle here. I'm going to be waiting for Mr. Boone when he comes home. You won't be the only one. I got a notion that them two is going to give us trouble. Oh, Dan was going to be able to clear this thing up. It's like to know how he's going to do it. Well, he might need to see a friendly face. <laughs> Exactly when do you expect him? She already told you she doesn't know. You are a little boy. Israel. Yes, ma'am. I have no way of knowing, Mrs. Grace. Well, love, when a man's out working his trap line... You crawled home fast enough with your nothing. Don't make no difference to us when, if ever, he gets back. You folks' rent's already started anyway. <laughs> Running on and on like a brook. 
<laughs> Put your hands up. Over your head. Hello! Pause home! Completely unashamed. I hope we can still call you the same. That is purest nonsense. My wife doesn't mean it like it sounds. Oh, do I not? Well, I don't exactly go along with it, but uh, there's some explaining in order. Well, go ahead and explain it, then. That ain't what we mean. Show Dan the paper. Uh, sure, I got it right here. <laughs> uh, just note the name on it. Well, Judge Henderson. Well, I'm glad to see you boys getting hold of some land. Well, that's Every neighborly. Every acre in Boonesboro? Annal, me and Cully checked the plat book. Well, where did this come from? You dragged us into this. Ladies, if the paper is genuine, Dan's in the same boat you are. That has yet to be proven. I believe he watched out for his own interests. Well, I intend to do that, Mrs. Grace. Yes, Bingham, would you mind uh, stepping in the cabin with me? Is that an invite, Bingham? Why, we'd be glad to accept the invite, Mr. Boone. Dan will straighten things out. I expect to make sure he does. Mrs. British, you wasn't invited. Huh! Come on, ladies. <laughs> about to give up our land. You got nothing to worry about, Mr. Bird. Oh, no, sir, E. Bob. Anytime you're short for the rent, you just let us know. We ain't yeah. gonna be hard on you. You ain't hardly in cahoots enough to count. Come on, S. Look. Convince them that all of a sudden their good fortune is really a forgery? You were convinced the judge's signature was real at first. Well, I would almost have convinced him if he'd been able to see it. Trouble is, he was long dead when it was made. That deed is on fresh paper, freshly aged. How can you tell? Oh, the last faint whiff of vinegar and smoke. The odor doesn't last very long. We can still prove it's a fraud in court, can't we? Yeah, likely about the time for Israel's children to regain title to the land and cabin if the lawyers haven't taken it by that time. That Churchill James is truly a pickerier. What's to be done? I'll well, get James or whatever his name is back here if we can to get him to clear up the confusion he's caused. Rebecca, may I have the use of your grandmother's jewel? Ma's heirloom? Well, I'll try to get it back, son, along with Mrs. Grace's title to the cabin and land. Churchill James travels in a great big uh, red-painted caravan. Mr. Franklin, you must mean. Franklin? Yeah, first cousin of Dr. Benjamin, once removed. He said that was his cousin's latest invention. Said lightning couldn't pass through it no more than a bull through a stone wall. That sounds like the man I'm after. A fellow named Abernathy. Abernathy, eh? Found here a couple of days ago. Gone like a whirlwind. Paid me off with these. Wish I'd have thought of that while he was here. But I was too hasty to pocket the money. I had him hornswoggled so good on price, I'd afraid he'd back down if I gave him a chance. I'll give you a good crown for one of those. I'll sell you the whole lot for two. 
No, I think one will be enough. Thank you. Thank you. For something? The latch string is usually out in these parts. There's no latch string on my door. Ah, a road agent in Mary England. I was wounded in my country's wars. I suppose I deserve that. Uh, do you mind if I have a look? <sighs> Pearls are seed. The carrots are plenty. I'll give you 60 pounds for it. Oh, that's a fair enough price, but uh, I like for my money not to smear, although I do admire your work. Uh, Newgate prison. But for coin clipping. Not road agency. And I should have known you were one of the Brotherhood. Just made a gig in furs. I'm flush in the fob cover. Forty pounds in real money. I uh, know where there's a nice little box of them if you're pickerier enough to work with them. You don't realize whom you're addressing, gentle sir. I am crook fingered Watt Paddington. Crook fingered Watt Paddington? It's my prerogative to ask for bona fides. Are you familiar with the name of uh, Joe Snag? You're a long way from your river, Joe. Redcoats and cannon, house and armory despoil, men scattered to the wind. The hazards of our profession, Joe. Up one day and down the next. The gallows for poor Watt, if I hadn't found ship for the colonies. The rascally captain extracted my last farthing. But you've made up for it, more than made up for it. I admit to talent, but colonial competition isn't terrifying. A present company accepted. But where are the rest of those jewels? What do you know about a Daniel Boone? Well, he's supposed to be an honest man. Did you ever know an honest man that didn't look out for his own interest? I suppose every time he leads a group of innocents into the wilderness, the land company gives him a rake off, eh? <laughs> but why do you need help? The loot is dead without a bill of sale. Paperwork is out of pirate's line. That's why I've been trailing you. Now, how are you at signatures? Daniel Boone is too well known for hit and miss and trust to luck. Now step into my little web. I was impressed into the Navy as a tyke. Could I have lived as an admiral, I should be there still. You didn't learn your paperwork there. Oh, from my maternal uncle, rest his soul, one of the great penmen of his time. Although, I sometimes flatter myself that I have refined on his lessons. Last will and testament, bill of sale, deed of title. Every legal document known to the law on its far side, and uh, some that I created for special occasions. Uh, 
Daniel Boone's conquest of the dark and bloody ground, Kentucky. Yes. And here, uh, my own collection of useful autographs. George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Alexander Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Joe, you don't know the labor and devotion that went into this. I wouldn't know how to begin. <laughs> and for each engagement, the right ink. But I fancy that uh, Mr. Bourne, crude son of the frontier, would depend on steeped oak galls. I'm a slave to order and technique. Joe, observe and learn. them diddlers we miss. Oh, Mr. Pitts? Mr. Pitts. We'll be out to see you later on. Oh, we'll be out to see you later on about our property. Them two are tenants? That's the King's Marshal. Sure a pretty coat he's got on. I'd rather have it in black broadcloth. Well, we can have one or two of each. We're the landlords. <laughs> Mrs. Boone, I am surprised to see you here. This is our home, Sir Ives. I well remember how really cleverly you conspired with your husband to trick me into giving the king's reward to the notorious Joe Snag for what should have been his own capture. Merely. At last, I have a warrant for Mr. Boone's arrest. He's made good his escape. Oh? Then I deduce that you must be... Grace Cowles? Mrs. Grace. You summoned the king's marshal. Against my paw? Yes, I did. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He's the only one worth shooting around here. Mark my words, you'll find you are nothing but his poor tools when all this comes to light. He'll be the true profiter. Now, Mrs. Grace, this time I cry shame on you. Oh, you do. No one is as blind as those who turn their eyes from what is before them. Daniel Boone and Judge Henderson were working together when they induced us to settle here. Don't you believe he knew his co-conspirator had already sold this land that we put our lives into, thinking it was truly ours? Can't you believe that he was trying to protect his own interests, even after he sneaked away in the middle of the night, after I charged him to his face? Out of the goodness of my heart and the fact that this is my livelihood, I ain't refusing you service in here anymore again. But I'd be much obliged if you, if you just stay out until I get a chance for my nausea to cure. Mr. Marshall, I call upon you to impanel a posse and pursue the fugitive. I am grateful for advice. But I have an expert knowledge of the illicit mind. Their weaknesses betray them. And Boone's weakness is he's uxorious. He'll come back for his wife and son. And when he does, the manacles will close on him. Heaven is just. I am satisfied. It is. Come, ladies. Problem, Mr. Joe? Oh, just thinking. Let me try to read your mind. Well, I hope it isn't that easy. <laughs> You're worried about making our first appearance smooth and trouble-free. How far off am I? Well, you're right on target. <laughs> well, you're a pirate, a man of direct action. The devious, shrewd, and clever are my forte. Yeah, you don't mind the suggestion? After that? <laughs> Well, men traveling together often arouse suspicion. They look like conspirators, even if they aren't. Which we are. Therefore, you go on ahead, pave the way, strike up an acquaintanceship with Boone, which you can do more easily than I, with no offense to your tailor. Well, my tailor isn't too easily offended. 
Okay. Case the lay, find out where he hides the box. I'll do the fingering as well as the paperwork. Now, while we're in Boonesboro, we pretend not to know each other so that when we leave, they won't know which one of us to take out after. Watch, you're not going to believe this, but with the exception of a couple of refinements, which I couldn't think of to my dying day, that's just about what I was going to suggest to you. Ho! Ho! I'll camp around here for the night. Well, I'll see you at the scene of the crime. Boonesboro will never forget us. That man will be a master when I finish teaching him. You sweat how to get here alone, delay your plans, and he plays right into your hands. It's almost too easy for comfort. Well, there's not too much left to go wrong now. I suppose not. But when he gets here... Even the Hineses will realize their deeds of fraud. I feel kind of sorry for them. You haven't seen them, landlord. The whole town can't sleep nights for their watching. What is he plotting? I can't hear a word they're whispering. He'll learn to keep secrets from his sovereign. Hey, yes, looky there. They're locking up Mr. Boone. Oh, I wish I hadn't been awake to look on it. Mr. James. Hi! Come on, hide, you bang it. Well, didn't you see how he's dressed? In a red coat. Official. You want him to take our land back? Bang it. He's the one who gave us the paper in the first place. Oh, well, suppose he found out something. What kind of something? That it was a blaze tree after all, and not a lightning blast tree like I said it was. Run! Sir Ives Wallace, the King's Marshal. Major. Uh, uh, Alec McTavish, of, of the Tavish. His Majesty's Fifth Grenadiers. The Scottish aristocracy are a noble race of warriors. Oh, uh, I. I was wounded at the Battle of Minden, uh, 1759. Frenchman's a barbarian. But by Jove, you defeated him. Well, I, I was not there alone. Spoken like a British officer and gentleman. Will you honor my table? Well, sir, the, the honor will be mine. This primitive tavern quarters me. In His Majesty's service, we do not expect comfort. True, Major. But my wines are my sollies. Equity! Find a pleasant spot for Major McTavish's equipage and uh, care for his horses. Well, you figured you was losing your partner in crime when he saw you in here. We can thank the King's Marshal for holding him. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, everything we've planned has been knocked into a cocktail. Yeah. Well, us pirates is used to the wind shifting. See if you don't think this will work. I don't know why we need this stuff anyway. Well, how would we look in history? Housebreaking in ordinary times. Come on. Let's go. You 
your door, Chief. Fear not. If a British officer can fear. This is rare. And must not be caught. This port, Major McCabbage, have travelled across His Majesty's ocean not merely once, but twice, Major. Twice. <laughs> Taste. I... It's grand. His Majesty. Ocean. His Majesty. Uh, I think that I should benefit from outside here. Well, it's um, it's time for me to be leaving. In any case, it's been an enjoyable no, evening. No, 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 Major. I shall see you to your domicile and recover my sobriety, as I shall do. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, well, it's been a grand evening, but. Uh, but we can say good night now, sir. Oh, no, no, no. I'll see you to your place. Well, what's your footing here? The wilderness? <laughs> Major, your company has been most. Major. You have been despoiled. Well, uh, Sir Ives, there's no need for you. Sir Ives! Well, if the fat's going to burn, it's already in the fire. You've been robbed. Everything. Oh, yes, so I see, so I see. You take it like a British officer. Major, I promise to bring the miscreants to justice and to return your positions. Well, uh, uh, sir, I, was, I, I could afford the loss. No man can afford the loss of dignity. <laughs> <laughs> What in the... What happened? Foul robbery. Why, that's downright dishonest. I wish that I had brought my Indian scout along to trail the villains. I gave him a red silk coat in excellent condition. He loves me like a father. Uh, Cully's a good man on trail. Cully, I shall reward you with your king's gratitude. Colonials have noses like wild beasts. <laughs> Your property, Major? They knew that I would be on their trail and abandon their ill-gotten loot. These are your possessions, for the record. Oh, Major, you are modest. You've won honors in His Majesty's Navy, as well as his army. And a gentleman tachygrapher as well. You are indeed a man of parts. Uh, oh, look at these. Oh, <laughs> splendid. Oh, Major. You have been the victim of criminals before tonight. These notes are counterfeit. Not all of them, most happily. You're not entirely bereft. You tell him, Bangy. Ah, uh, we come to confess. To the robbery? Robbery? You're daft. That ain't his fault, Bangy. No, it was a blaze tree after all. I said it was, didn't I? Do you know what this is about? Well, not yet, but uh, I am getting a glimmering. Mr. James, this gonna be bad as bad for you. Oh, you're mistaken. I'm Major McTouch. Oh, no, you ain't. You're Mr. Churchill James. I'm afraid you are mistaken, my man. Churchill James was a favorite alias of crook-fingered Watt Paddington. The counterfeiter and forger. I had a warning from London. 
He gave us a deed to Boonesboro for them furs that we thought was ours. In place of these. You see, what happened was... Hope you didn't break anything. They might have ruined them. to be done in by an honest man. Console yourself, Crookfinger. Mr. Boone's constant friendship with the criminal convinces me that you are what I'm convinced you are. And soon or late, I shall prove it about him. <laughs> but at least he won't hang you. Neither one of us. And yet you colonists pretend to favor law and order. Amen. Mrs. Boone, I believe I shall see you and your little family again. And you'll be as welcome as ever. Au revoir, young man. <clears throat> Forward. <clears throat> for our deliverance, Mrs. Hopper. Hey, where are you Hines is going? Well, it's gonna be a celebration. Well, come on to it. You mean we're invited too? Bingham, we got us invited. Without you, there's nothing to celebrate. Uh, Providence, Mr. Boone. Grace, I asked you and Providence to keep still just for this once. <gasps> Carl Cole! And besides that, Cincinnatus charged me at the keg of rum and a new dipper for all these people to enjoy themselves. Yeah! Yeah! Carl Coles is a free man. Come on over the tavern, everybody. It sure was nice when we owned all this property. The nicest thing our whole lives. S and Ben, come on. Thank you. 